All right, all right. Welcome back. Dad Talk with Jay Blues. Got another guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up? My name is Eddie Cristobal, a.k.a. Eddie Cam, and I'm a dad just like Jay Blues. <laughs> Dope videographer in the city doing his thing. Uh, how many kids do you have? Just uh, a son. Okay. Just a son and one and done. One and <laughs> one and done. One and done. And how old is he? He's six, turning seven. Okay, yeah. big boy now, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, super they dope. Grow fast, like you know, like I had old coworkers. They had kids, and I was younger still. And they be like, "Yo, they grow up so fast, like blinking of eye." And I never believed it until like you have your own kids. You know? Yeah, fact. Like you, like you blink it, like what the hell, like you were just born yesterday. Like, you're like <laughs> seven years old. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. You know. Okay, and uh, how's the journey been? It's good. You know, it was. Uh, it was exciting, but you know, there's some rough parts where because like. There's no, like, you could read up on how to be a dad or read a dad manual, but there's nothing that could prepare you in the world to kind of know what to do as a father, right? Like, even though, like, you know what your father did with you, but you try to apply that, but there's certain nuances yeah. that prepares you or tests you on how to be a dad. But it's, other than that, like, it's been, it's been good so far. Okay, so yeah. that's dope. See, I never, see, with me, I didn't have my father there the whole time. Yeah. So, um... A lot of stuff I learned as a dad. I'm not gonna lie. I, I learned it watching like TV, like right. Bill Cosby, like right. Fresh Prince. Um, I picked up a lot of clues from there. So, okay. Um, tell me about your experience having your dad's uh, influence on your parenting style. So my dad's style is uh, he's more of like strict. You know, he's like a strict soldier mentality. So I kind of try to bring that into my parenting style, and yeah. I still do. Um, but I tone it back a lot, um, just cause it's like, you know, I'm, I, I'm an eighties baby. So back then discipline was different from, you know, <laughs> the millennials now. Yeah. Like back then discipline was physical touch, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like beatings. Uh, now you can't really do that. So it's more so just kind of like being more stern, say what you mean, mean what you say. Yeah. And they'll know, they'll know when you're not, the, and the kids will test you. Right. Uh, but when they know, like they can't test you. And they know you're for real, then, you know, that's that's how you kind of get their respect and their attention. So that's been more my style. It's like I'll give you a little bit of leeway, but when I have to put you in check, I'm putting you in yeah. check. Yeah, you know. So, and I, I think I think they they respond to that those boundaries, right? Yeah. They definitely will. Every kid's gonna try to test the boundaries. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, don't touch the stove. Ah, let me try. See what yeah. I could do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think once you you set the boundaries and you're stern with it. They, they respect it. Yeah. Um, most of the time, they respect it, yeah. right? And if they go out of bounds, and that's the way they learn. It's like I told you. Yeah. You know, like, you know, my parents back then, it's like, they'll tell me, like, don't press a red button. But they want to explain to me why, what will happen if I touch a red button. Yeah. You know, it's just like, just don't touch it. Right. And then, you know, as a kid, you're curious, right? <laughs> and you do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I'll try to explain, like, what happens if you do it. So, But if you do it, that's your own consequence that you have to deal with. Because I explained to you, yeah. don't touch a red button. But you did it anyway, yeah. knowing what will happen. So you deal with that consequence. I, I think that's a, a good point, too, because um, the older generation, they never explain things. It was just, you know, don't do it. And you're yeah. like, hey, you couldn't even ask why sometimes. Yes. Sometimes you're like, Ooh, and why? don't ask me why yeah. I yeah. said so. And yeah. it was just so so rigid and stern, yeah. right? Um, and, and it made you more curious, to be honest. It's it made true. you be like, wow, what would happen if yeah. I did hit the red yeah. button? No, you know? it's so true. Like, my parents were like that. It's like, oh, you got to save your money. It's like, why? It's like, just save. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like, why? Mm -hmm. They won't tell you the why, you know? Yeah. And if you keep asking, like, it's almost like you're being disrespectful or you're not listening, right? Right. But I guess it's a difference of generations where for us, it's like we have more patience to explain it as so back then where they're like, it's their way or no way. Yeah. Right? That's what it was. It's yeah. my way. I'm your parent. I'm telling you to do this. That's it. Don't question me. I have, like, total authority. Yeah. And I, for me, I just love the conversation where, you know, when you're explaining it, um, the curiosity that they have, right? It just shows how much they're, they they want to learn. Yeah. Right. And how much you can input in their life. Yeah. So I, I, I welcome questions yeah. with my kids, right? Yeah. Ask me why. Like, I'll explain to you. Yeah. Within reason, like don't get, yeah. don't like, don't be like, you know, when kids are being like silly, they're yeah, like, all right, yeah, yeah. chill. I'm telling yeah. you why. Then <laughs> yeah, I got to put the law down. Yeah. Um. But no, I, I, I do appreciate the the questioning back and forth a little bit. Yeah, and they, and they're they're very curious. Like that's what I learned. Like like they're super curious. Like from the day they're born till like who knows till like forever, right? Like, yeah. 
always trying to question things, which is good, you know, and I try to provide as much as I can because back, back then it's like, no, yeah, like, no, just do this, do what I say. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, that's dope like, that you have that same style where it's like you, you are open to conversation and answering their questions, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, that's, think how we all learn, right? We all learn from, like, question, answers, experience. Yeah, yeah. So it's either I'm, you're going to tell me why or I'm going to find out why, yeah. right? So yeah. it's, you know what I mean? Have a round of found out, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, we, that's the only way people learn. Yeah. Like, people rarely learn by someone saying it and and that's it without any explanation, yeah. Yeah. right? So it's, it's just um, a learning style for us. Yeah. And I was that kid. I was that kid. If uh, you told me no and gave me no explanation, like I'd be curious and I'd try to fuck around and find out. Yeah. Um, or if you told me, oh, don't stay out late, I would go and do it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just It just made me do the opposite uh, just because of like their style. It's yeah. so strict and rigid. It's like, man, you don't give me no leeway, so I'm just going to rebel anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so do, do you see a lot of your son... Do you sorry? Do you see a lot of yourself in your son? I see, yeah, I see, I see some similarities. You know, like he's he's definitely smarter than I was as a kid. Yo, these kids are super They're smart, super smart, man. Like, and the acts, like the information they have access to is, is yeah. wild. And like, just for him growing up, and like, you know, when you have those moments where like, where did you learn this? Like, <laughs> you know, like, where did you learn this word? Or like, yep. where did you learn this from? And you like. You like know they go to school. You know what they watch. You kind of monitor what they play on the iPad or video games. And you're like, yeah, like I never seen that or heard that like while I was around you. So we yeah. learn this stuff. So just to kind of see that, it's just it's mind boggling sometimes. No, th- this generation is is super intelligent. Yeah. Um, and you even see it more like as as like new babies are being born, um, just how advanced they are. I'm seeing babies that like a month hold up their heads and stuff, yeah. or like even like. I, I I'm not even lying. I saw it on like Instagram or YouTube or something. Like a baby that's just born, like lifting up his head. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I like, yo, yeah. where are you? What are you yeah. doing? Like, <laughs> you gotta wait a couple months yeah, for that because yeah. that's how it was back when like yeah. we were growing up and my kids were growing up. They they didn't do that stuff for like yeah. a couple months. But yeah. it's like these kids are just so more so much more advanced right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, man. It's wow. Crazy. Uh, and, and how old are you? Uh, I'll be forty this year, man. So you had your kid around what 33, 30? Yeah. 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 So yeah. how, so I had all my kids a little bit younger than that. Yeah. So how how does it feel being the age you are now and and raising children? Do you feel like you have the energy for it? Or do you feel like you're exhausted? No, I, I like I think I'm in a sweet spot. Like you know, um, you know, I'm just trying to keep healthy. So when he does get older and he wants to play sports, I can kind of keep up. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So right now, like I'm at that phase where. You know, if I want to let him win, I'll let him win, you know. But, you know, you get to that point where you're actually trying and they'll, they'll beat you, right? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah, like, I, it's, it's not like that I feel exhausted. It's because, like, I only have one child, right? So right. I have friends that have multiple childs and, like, they can, they look stressed. They look tired. Like, their schedule is crazy. It's hard yeah. to, like, link up with them because it's the scheduling. Yeah. Right? And if you have, like, two or three kids that you put them in sports or extracurricular activities, you know, like that, their schedule is even more hectic. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's why I'm like one and done. And, you know, I told my wife, I was like, yo, it's up to you. Like I give you till this age, if you want more, you let me know, but I'm good with one. If you're good with one, then we'll cap it at that. So, uh, okay. once, once get like, I don't know when I was younger, I wanted three, just like, it would be like me, my brother, and my sister. Okay. But nowadays it's like, it's expensive nowadays. It's it's wild. The inflation. I'm just like, I don't know how my friends do it with like three, four kids, you know? It's it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you manage work life and, and fatherhood? Because you're you're pretty busy. I yeah. see the work that you do with the videography and you're you stay busy. Yeah. How do you manage like the your time between those two things? Uh so I learned this where did I learn this from? I learned this from uh mixed by Ali. When he came down to Toronto and he was dropping gems at house, he he was saying like, yo, like when he had his kid, like he learned to prioritize family time okay, over work. So it's like he would be like, if I'm not working, my phone's off or like, you know, I'll turn it on at a certain time. But before that, 
it's family time. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay. You know, so if I'm not working, I pay. I, I put my attention into like my kid, my wife, family time. Yeah. So that's where I kind of draw that line. So if I'm not working, because you know we get caught up like, oh, let me just edit or do some work stuff. Yeah. Um, and it takes away time from the kids, right? Yeah. So I'd rather spend that time. And if I really need to work, that's work time. It's family time. It's family time. Yeah. So. I like that prior prioritizing family yeah. time. Uh, I think I've struggled with that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, I'm just like, same with me, man. It took me about a couple of years. Like when I started my business, it took me like a year and a half to, to get there. Okay. Like it came to a point where I told my wife, I was like, yo, like I'm getting busy. Like you almost have to book my time. And some people might see that as fucked up, but it's like, you know, like if you say like, oh, we're going we're gonna to do a date night or whatever, or we're going to do this function with the family. Like book, book, put in my calendar and just book that time off. So I, I know not to book nothing. Yeah. Right. Cause then uh, guys like us, we're going to take what we can get and just, we could be busy like the whole year. Facts. Right. So. Facts. Okay. Um, so what are some of your proudest moments of being a dad? Um, I think just kind of seeing his growth, you know, like sometimes just seeing his growth from year to year. Uh, even as simple as like speech, you know, like, like looking at old videos and seeing the way his baby talk was to like how his, how he talks so much more eloquently now. Right. Yeah. And their vocabulary is always expanding. Um, seeing moments like him killing it on like at school and stuff like that. So like just him growing as a person, is, that, that makes me proud. Okay, yeah. and I, I see he does like a lot of stuff you do. Like, if he's into the the videography and the photography yeah, type of yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he likes taking photos. He likes uh, he likes playing video games. He likes playing ball. Um, you know, so he's into that. So you know, just like what we were into, like when we were kids. Right? Yeah. Like at first he was into soccer, and then once he started doing basketball, he got more into that and then dropped soccer. Uh, but you know, it could change. I don't try to force him onto like what he like what. I want him to do yeah. whatever he wants to do, and it's fun for him. Yeah, that's one thing that I didn't do with my kids. Um, and a lot of people were like, yo, Jay, you're so sick at ball. Like, yo, your kids are going to be dope. Like, yeah. make them play. And I'm like, ah, I'll let them do what they want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I don't want to, I, I never wanted to force my children into becoming my clone, yeah. in a sense, right? Um, there was a guy that I, I know he had, he actually had more kids than me. I think he had like six. And he tried to put all of them in basketball. Ooh, that's a whole squad. Baby. Yeah, he put all of them in basketball, and he was like relentless. With yeah. It. Like, the, but I'm not gonna lie, his kids were sick. Yeah. yeah. Especially at a, a young age, a couple of them even performed at uh, a Steve Nash charity game when oh, they were wow. like like babies, pretty much. Crazy. Right. Um. But he put so much effort into them becoming like basketball players that I think it broke down the relationship. That he had with them oh, right yeah. and 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 then when they didn't grow as tall as they thought they would or you know they didn't develop the way they they did yeah. um yeah. that relationship was unrepairable oh man That's right good. so they, yeah the, the kids kind of went a different direction yeah. and now from what i what i recall they're not even in contact with each other really? wow. yeah That's so nice. i i never wanted to i never wanted to make like mini clones yeah. of myself yeah. i want to see them just become the yeah. uh, individual like, yeah. you know because i've seen it growing up like especially like asian parents like they'll put you in stuff that you didn't want want to do like piano like <laughs> my friends like like oh i played piano or i had to go to like bible study or all these, all these things that that like they didn't they weren't really into you know yeah what I mean? so like i knew like once i was gonna have a kid i was like you know like i'm just gonna let him do what he wants to do if he wants to do skating let's do skating or do ball do ball but i'm not gonna play like, i'm not gonna put you in ball just because i want you to play ball yeah you know, I want you to have fun because you want to do it. Yeah. And if you like it, you like it. If you want to switch to something else, switch to something else. Asian Asian parents really like piano. Like yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't do it, but like you know, like they, I, a lot of like some of my Asian friends are like, you know, Korean and Chinese. Yeah, it's like some sort of instrument. Yeah. Instrument. The, but, and I, I see the good in it because they the kids normally are pretty disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they they just force you in there, yeah, and it's they, like you know, like. And then, like, like it becomes, like, your friend. It's like, you know, like, yeah, you're doing it as a kid. But once you get to an age where you're, like, 
F this, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. And then you kind of resent your parents because it's like, you know, you forced me to do this stuff. And I don't want to do it as a kid. I'd rather be, you know, I'm sure in their heads, like, I'd rather be playing soccer or playing in the playground with my friends, you know? Like, yeah. So that's the thing with the communication thing. It's like the parents just kind of force things on you mm -hmm. and not know. They don't even check for what you're thinking or what you're feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. How how active are your parents in your in your son's life now? Um, like my parents, they're they're semi active just because they live like all the way in the West End. Okay. But you know they'll they'll come check up, they'll come visit here and there. My mother in law lives with us, so she's she's pretty active. Like, you know, like sees them go to school, drop them off, or pick them up if she needs to, and things like that. So, um, but yeah, other than that, like it's you know we don't really try to rely on our grand like the the. Like the, his grandparents too much. Yeah, they're there if we need them, right? Yeah, I I noticed with like with like grandparents on on my side, they they treat my kids differently than they treated us growing up. Like they're the the strictness that they had for us is is window? totally out the window. <laughs> Everything my kids can do that I'm like I never got to do yeah. that. Like yeah. what do you mean they yeah. can stay up late? Like yeah. I never got to stay up late. Yeah, I, I it's just yeah, it's just a different. I, I, Maybe when I become a grandfather, I'll understand it. But it's yeah. just a different energy that I they have. That. I see that in my parents, too. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. They, they become softer. Um, and it's more like, it's like they know they don't have to discipline no more. Uh, I, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Right? Like, they, it's not their child. Like, it's our child. Yeah. So we have to do disciplining, right? Um, but I, I also let them know. I'm like, you know, like, he can play his iPad for an hour when he stays with you. But once that hour hits, you tell him, like, you got to shut it off. Like, yeah. Don't try and sneak it. Like he'll try and like try and, you know, push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you don't notice. And next, <laughs> you know, an hour turns into two hours. But they're pretty good with that. Like if I tell my mom, like, yo, I'll cut it off after an hour. Yeah, she'll do it. But yeah, I think that's. I'm in the same boat. I noticed that too. I was like, my dad was like the strictest dude. Like, you know, never smile. Like, you know, like intimidating. Like my friends would call him to like, yo, your dad's so intimidating. You know, <laughs> but now he's like a different dude. Like when my son came into the world, it's like. You know, he's like talking to him, and then it's like I'm like, yo, where was this kid? Where was his dad when I was growing up, man? I was like, man. It's like they 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 went through the process of raising us, and then they learned how to be better parents. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, now that I'm a better parent, I don't have any kids. I yeah. have these grandkids. I'm gonna be the better version of yeah. parenting yeah. to my grandkids, and it's 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 interesting to see because. Sometimes you wish you had that version of the parents yeah. growing up. You're like, yeah. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could, yeah. you know, talk to you or express or kind of get away with some of the yeah. stuff that my kid's trying to get away with yeah. right now. Yeah. Cause you were on me like seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like where you, are you, were you, are you like the, the eldest? I'm, I'm a middle child. A middle child? Yeah. 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 So I was, I was the oldest. So I okay. got the hard stick. Like they tried to be strict with me. Uh, and then I noticed like, as each child was born, like my brother, then my sister, they were less and less strict. Uh, they were strict with my sister because she's a girl, like yeah, that type, type of way. But like in terms of like stuff that I was doing, I'm like, well, you got to do all this stuff, and I did. Like I, I, I always tell them, like, yo, I paid the way for you guys because <laughs> yeah. So that's how my daughter sounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I see. Like I couldn't get away with all that stuff you guys are doing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so how how did that feel growing up, like? It was it like a lot of pressure? Um, was there any resentment there? Being like you are like essentially like the guinea pig. Um, no, I didn't really resent them. Like you know, like I was. I mean, yeah, I guess yes and no. Like where it's like, you know, like I saw like how they would act towards my brother, and my sister, and like they were less strict with them, and I was just yeah. like, there was a little bit of resentment there. But other than that, like I was just like. I had more of like, you know, I don't give a, I don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah. I was a rebel and, you know, I just kind of, um, you know, I just knew that that's who I was. So it's like, it is what it is, you know, but, uh, I knew like when my child came in, I was just like, you know, I kind of, I kind of have to be like them, but toned down. Yeah. Just so like, uh, he won't have like a rough child. Like, you know, we, I'm sure like we had a good childhood, but it was also like rough at times. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, yeah. I, th I think that's everybody like definitely I had a I had a great childhood yeah but there are definitely rough rough parts of it oh yeah and definitely some trauma 
yeah. that I didn't even know affected me until I got older. And really? I, as I got into like social work and everything, I'm yeah. like reflecting on myself like, ah, there's the trauma. Like yeah. it pops up every now and then. Yeah. Um, and I, I do my best to kind of like manage that. Mm. Um, so I don't pass that on to my children. Right. Right. Um, and it's, it's uh, again, it's a work in progress, like every day type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, no one's perfect, right? None yeah. Of us, none of our parents, our kids aren't perfect. So, you know, one day at a time, we could always be the better person we could be, right? Right. And there's no manual in, yeah. in, in parenting. Uh-huh. Well, there are manuals, but I don't, I don't really read them. I don't think they're, I don't think they can apply to every situation. Because every, every, every situation is different. Right. Every culture is different personalities are different yeah so yeah. like how can you write a manual that one size fits all like it, it can never it can never work agreed agreed and you're married right yeah and how long have you been married for now oh like uh 10 years now okay yeah and and how how did your relationship change once you had the, your son uh let's see it, the dynamics is obviously different like once you know now it's like three of us yeah um you know so like date nights weren't as as frequent uh but i find like we put more of our love towards each other into the child and then try to just kind of bond as a collective right um but yeah we just now we just do everything for him you know what i mean i i like that i like that um i i i do believe that having mom and dad in the same house and both of them being on the same page when it comes to uh, raising their their children is yeah. is key to yeah. having you know a healthy child. Yeah. Right. Um. But I also noticed that like it does become difficult. I've been married for like twenty two years. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. twenty. Yeah. Twenty. I'm saying I think because honestly, <laughs> like in a couple of days, it's about to be twenty three. Right. My yeah. anniversary is coming, nice. so it's about to be twenty three. So um, um. But definitely having a bunch of kids i have five so having yeah. a bunch of kids definitely changed the dynamic and sometimes it's easy to get lost in um providing so much for the child that yeah. you kind of forget about each other exactly right so yeah. like you said date nights are you know far from and few and then all of a sudden you know you're not communicating as much yeah. and yeah. you're only communicating about the child and yeah. it, it, it you kind of you can get lost in in raising children yeah. right so what what strategies have you used to not let that happen um we just try to make an effort to you know to communicate to each other more like you know there's times where it's like you know you know you want to communicate with each other but you're just like in your head you're like you're just too tired you know (laughs) yeah you don't want to deal with it and you just kind of push it away for another day yeah uh but when you guys do talk or when we do talk it's you know it it you feel better you know because you were able to communicate you know she is able to see what I feel. I'm able to see what she feels. We try to find a solution or see what we can do better. Um, you know, but at first it was, you know, it's difficult, especially when like a newborn, like the first year is always difficult. First two years, I think was difficult for me because, you know, like my style is different than her parenting style. Okay. Right? You know, like sometimes like I try to be strict, but she'd be more lenient um, or she would like undermine my authority. Okay. And then I would, I'd be like, yo, like, you know, like I don't say anything when you're disciplining, you know, him. So like, don't try to under, undermine my authority when I'm disciplining him one yeah. to one. Yeah. Right. Like if you don't disagree, if you don't agree with it, you know, we could take it offline. Cause like in his eyes, he'd be like, oh, their styles are different. They're not in the same team. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? So, Yeah. Kid, and kids are so great at that. Yeah. Once they find that hole, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. they're going to expose. Okay, okay, mom doesn't like this, dad likes this. Okay, I got yeah, it, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And they'll they'll play that to their advantage oh, all yeah. the time. So we yeah, did that too as kids, right? Oh yeah, listen. It's like you know which mom or which parent to ask to to stay longer at a crib yeah, or yeah. or sleep over at a friend's house. Yeah, because you know which one will say yes, which one will say no, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Um, and it's 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 not the fault of the kid. Like the kid's gonna do what the kid does. Yeah, like you know. Yeah. So it's definitely, but it is very manipulative of children to do that stuff. <laughs> they don't know <laughs> any better. They're children out here right? manipulating every situation, <laughs> man. It's crazy. <laughs> um. All right. So what is uh what is an actual moment that you didn't feel so proud of? Uh, I think for me, it was probably the age where he was like 
still like trying to learn words. Okay. And for me, that was like the toughest for me as a parent because I couldn't like he's trying to communicate to me and I'm trying to understand him and I'd get frustrated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people would be like, you know, he's only like two years old or three years old. Like, yeah, you know, like that's what they do. Right. And it's like for me, that was like one of the frustrating like few months because it's like he's trying to communicate and I couldn't understand. Like, I didn't know what he wanted because, you know, he might be mumbling words and then I'm like, I don't know what you want. You yeah. Because like, he can't communicate clearly. So, yeah, I think for me, it's like it it taught me patience. At first, it just I was frustrated. OK. And then I had to learn patience. Yeah. So that kind of like. At first, it was more of like a, yeah, unproud moment. And then once I learned patience, then I started to be like, okay, like the patience helped me get through yeah. those kind of like times where I felt frustrated. Yeah. And and during that time, did you notice that your wife already had the patience? Yeah. It's so crazy yeah. how they already have this stuff. Yeah. And we're here trying to work and <laughs> to develop these skills. And they're like, yeah, man, I already have it. I don't know what your problem yeah. is. And well, that's what mothers are, man. Like they just know, right? They're yeah. just born with it. And I'm just like, yo, like, how do you, like, not, like, get, like, <laughs> frustrated? Because I'm like, he's, like, he's getting all cranky. And I'm like, I, he's fed, he's changed. Or, like, you know, like, I just don't know what he wants, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, he's just trying to communicate. And he's getting frustrated because you're not understanding him. And so, and then you're, like, you're kind of like him. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So when I, when I when I put that into perspective, I was like, oh, okay. You know what? I'm just going to be like, yeah, 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 all right, cool. Like, and I'll just kind of, like, go with the flow as opposed to, like, show him that I'm frustrated because I don't know what he wants. And then he gets frustrated. What, what are your hopes for your son? Uh, my hopes is, you know, for him to just be, you know, successful in his own way, whatever he defines successful, whatever successful is for him. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, and I don't doubt that, you know, he won't be successful because just to this point, He's been doing everything really well, you know, to his, his best abilities, even from, from school, listening at home, you know, like, yeah, kids get crazy sometimes, but overall, um, you know, I think as long as you parent them well and you teach them well and you raise them well, like just tell them what's right, what's wrong, then I think they'll be fine. Like in this world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I tell, I tell my kids, <laughs> I tell my kids, um, and I've said this before on my podcast, but yeah. I tell I tell them my whole goal is to make sure my girls aren't on the pole and my <laughs> son ain't in these streets. That's it. And then if I do these things, you know, I'm a, I'm a good dad. That's I'm, it, I'm, man. I've been successful. Yeah. And that's what I kind of I kind of want to make sure. Like you said, I want them to succeed in anything they they want to yeah. do. Yeah. I, I like I said earlier, I don't want to necessarily direct them into something that I want them to be in. Yeah. I want them to find their passion and, and find their voice. Yeah. And then really like cultivate, you know, their dreams. Yeah. Right. And once they do that, then I'm I'm good. Yeah, because that's where they're gonna grow, right? Yes. Yeah. And you just allow them to grow or give them a that space to grow, and, and encourage them to grow because you're not you're not trying to drag them down into what you, that you want to do. You know, like if my if I were to be like, oh, you're gonna grow up to be a nurse, typical like Asian parent, <laughs> you grow up to be a nurse. You gotta be a nurse. You gotta go into nursing. Yeah. It's like no, I don't want to be into it. Like I see even just normal people, it doesn't have to be Asian, but just you know, parents always try to make you be successful in what they think is successful. Yeah, it's like I'm a nurse, you got to be a nurse. I'm a doctor, you got to become a yeah. doctor. Yeah, that's like, well, what if I don't want to be a doctor and I want to play music or yeah. you know, be a photographer? You know, does does that make you less successful? You know. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I, again, it's just about following your passion. I think once you're doing something that you're passionate about. The money will come. Yeah. Like if you'll never feel like work. Yeah, yeah. You you're not working and the yeah. money will come. Yeah. Especially yeah. if it's that's your passion. Right. It, it's 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 inevitable. It'll happen. Agree. And do you find like, you know, since you started shooting, like and you sometimes you look back, like for me, like I worked a corporate job mm -hmm. and people are like, Oh, what'd you do before? I worked corporate and it's like I would never go back to corporate. You know, because I know that that work style, that lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't like kudos to people who do it. But when you want, when you like doing what you do, like it does never feels like work. See, I still work a nine to five and I shoot. So yeah. I'm in that middle area still, yeah. right? Where I enjoy the stability of a nine to yeah, five, yeah. but like I would rather, yeah. 
I would rather just be doing my own thing and 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 maybe who knows maybe one day I will make the f- full transition over yeah. to like being you know my entrepreneur yeah. self and and um that's the goal anyway um but hey I tell people all the time like you don't have to quit your nine to five to follow your passion that, I, I you know listen I, mean? I I can use my nine to yeah. five to fund my passion yeah. right yeah. and and it works so yeah. if you can if you can if you can balance that and family then you're you're good that's it right because there's some like there's some days i'll be like i am not shooting yeah. i'm not shooting yeah. i'm not taking a gig me and my kids are gonna sit down and watch cartoons it's and it. and watch movies all yeah. day and just kind of chill we're gonna yeah. go to the store we're gonna vibe um and, and i'll i'll do that yeah. I, the money is great yeah yeah it's okay cool whatever yeah but money isn't everything especially when you have a family so yeah yeah, no, it's so true, you know, like, and with people, like, they think, like, oh, like, you follow your passion, but they don't realize, like, I stuck around with my nine to five while I was doing my passion part time. Yeah. You know, and then once the that passion, like, over, like, once that money was more than my salary, then I was like, oh, yeah, then you quit. <laughs> then I quit, but I, I tried to keep it as long as I could, but yeah. it only lasted, like, a couple months, because I was like, well, now I started like really hating my job because oh yeah you and all of that and yeah. everything so that's when i just took the plunge you know it was scary but yeah i took the plunge and then it was good and then i tell people all the time like i know you want to do something else from what you're nine to five but don't just quit you know oh, no, like no. do it on the side and trust me like if you do if if it's successful you'll see that the the scales tip yeah you know what i mean yeah so. um do you feel as a father that you get the the credit or the appreciation that you deserve? Uh, probably not. <laughs> you know, like I'm sure it's there. Yeah, but it's not like super acknowledged. You know, because it's the the stigma of like you know the wives do everything. Yep. Um, you know, and we're just there to support or work and put bread in the table, right? Yeah. But you know, we 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 do help out. You know, I'm not saying we're mothers. You know, like, shout out to all the moms because you guys are, like, superhuman. Shout beings. out when the it, moms. Yeah, when it comes to kids, like, I don't know. That's a full-time job on its own. Yeah. And you guys work on top of that. Yeah. And do your hobbies and have to deal with us. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys you guys deserve an award and all the acknowledgement in the world. But, you know, it's not like we're invisible. You know, we, we, we pull our weight, right? Yeah. So, and we're just doing the things that our fathers do. Like, I'm trying to actually have like a, a strong relationship where it's like we're kind of friends but you know it's like there's that line of like father son but also we, we could you know hang out and stuff yeah right? yeah so i i i'm trying to create the same thing my dad and my mom split when i was about nine yeah and then my dad kind of slowly exited the picture of, right. of raising us his children mm-hmm. um so my whole goal was to be like better than him in a relationship yeah. with my kids. Yeah. Um, so I, I use that as motivation and fuel to be like, all right, you know, my dad didn't do this, so I'm going to do that. My dad right. didn't do this, I'm going to do that. Right. Um, I, I just find it, I find it, it, it fuels me, it motivates me to create a better relationship. Yeah. And and it's worked because yeah. I have a great relationship with my kids. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it's It's actually amazing to see. And as they get older, um, the relationship changes, but it's amazing to see how organic and how fluid that relationship is. And do you find, like, I don't know if you're still in contact with your dad, but do you find, like, your your mom or dad, when the, the way they see your relationship with your kids, like, you can see it in their eyes, like, they're proud? Yeah, yeah. So, um, my, my, my dad passed yeah. a couple years ago. Oh, sorry to hear. But... Thank you. And he ne- he's never ever met my kids. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. it's the crazy thing. He never he never oh. met my kids. Um, he found out that I had kids when they were much older, mm-hmm. um, and it was a weird it was a weird thing. You know, I, I I called him up. I said, Dad, you know what? How you doing? And this is after like years I haven't talked to him. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I have I have some kids. I'm married. I have kids. He's like, that's good for you. And he hung up the phone. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Dead, like I'm dead, dead ass serious. Like he hung up the phone, and I, I'm like, "Yo, okay, maybe the phone disconnected." Like you, <laughs> you hit him back. <laughs> I, I dialed back. I'm like, "Nah, like maybe maybe the phone disconnected." Like let me let me 
let me give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh. he ain't that, like, cold. What? And I called back, and he was just like, no answer. And that was, like, the last, that was actually the last time I talked to my dad. Oh, that's Right? Wild. So, so I never really got to see his, like, reaction to, like, seeing my yeah, kids yeah. or um, watching me be a father. Mm. Um, so I never, I never saw that, never got to experience that. But my mother, my mother's reaction, she is beyond proud nice. of how like me and my and my brother are raising our kids yeah. and and how we have our family so she she looks and she tells me all the time like i'm so happy that That's you have amazing. that relationship with your kids yeah uh, like the bond that you guys have she says my house is a joke she comes she, she comes and visits me because she lives in the states right now she'll come and visit me yeah. and she'll stay here and she'll be like jason your kids are hilarious like yeah. these guys are amazing um so it's 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 really, really satisfying to to actually hear that yeah. and and you know get that from my mother. Where it's like, yo, you're That's doing amazing. a good job, you know. Yeah. yeah, I find mothers are more vocal about it than you know fathers. Fathers will just kind of like you sense it or, or you kind of see it in them. Yeah, you know, like my my dad, like you know, I could tell like he's like like as simple as like you know I had to I had to learn Rubik's cubes so I can like how to solve it mm. so I could teach my son and he learned how to solve it. And then he was showing like my dad and then my dad's like, Oh, that's crazy. Like he doesn't know how to solve it. Yeah. He goes, Who taught you? It's like, Oh, my dad did. And like, he looked at me and he looked at him and I could see like, Oh, that's oh that's man. Wild. You know, like, you know, like, I don't know. I just saw something where it's like, you know, like I saw it in his eyes where it's just like, Oh, that's, that's crazy that your dad like did that to you. you know? like, yeah. Like, you know, like growing up, like he didn't really teach me stuff. You know, like it's it was our our relationship was like it's a weird dynamic. It was more like soldier, like you know, he's a sergeant, I'm the soldier. Yeah. You know, like do as I say, or like you're gonna get disciplined, right? So you know, like or if I tried to help, and like like as simple as like tools. All right, come help me with this. You know, like don't touch that. It's like, well, how can I help you if I can't touch something? <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I just saw in his eyes like that dynamic. It was different. Like you see, like, oh, uh, like you know, like, oh, you're doing good. Like raising this kid, like, yeah, you know, like he's doing stuff. Like he's smart, intelligent, he's funny. So my mom already knows. Like she's vocal about it. Like oh, like he's so he's so funny, he's so good. You're raising him well. So I'm proud of you. So, yeah. yeah, and your dad will never give you that nah, that verbally, he'll but he'll yeah, give you. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's more of like just like a look, you know. Yeah, like, that's how I know. Like you know. But that's like us dudes, you know. It's we're not like verbally affectionate. Yeah, it's more of just like a head nod kind of thing, <laughs> you know. All right, and that's it. it. It's so wild how it's so wild that like us as us as men, we I don't want to say have a hard time, but you know, it's 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 a lot harder for us to show that type of affection. Yeah, yeah. I, and I've I've actively tried to change that narrative with my yeah. son yeah so i said yo bro i'm proud of you you know keep doing what you're doing yeah. like i'll i'll give him the the verbal yeah. um affirmations that he needs yeah or or that i feel i feel like i didn't get yeah so i want to i want to make sure that he gets it so yeah. that he's used to it and it's not it's not anything unusual to yeah. like kind of be vulnerable or yeah be uh receptive to yeah. like you know those type of things i totally agree with that i'm the same way like okay. uh you know i try to give that that verbal affirmation the verbal praise i say i'm what you know whatever i'm thinking i'm trying to say to him whether i'm proud or disappointed uh just so he knows you know i'm actually like i give him more like physical attention like you know like affection you know more like more hugs so like me and my dad we never hug each other yeah like i could probably count in three fingers how many times we probably hugged each other you know like, wow Wow. Like we weren't like, you know, you see some like some parents like that's, you know, they're more like affectionate, you know, like around the shoulder hugs and things like that. Um, but my dad, we it was it was never that. You know? Yeah, I think even with my mom, like now we like when we see each other, we'll hug each other. But and then even my dad got more accustomed to that. But when I was growing up, like nothing. No. Hug. Yeah. You see all the other kids like, oh, like when they get picked up, like they hug their mom and dad. Yeah. That's nothing. Wow. This is like get in the car and that's it. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, my mom, I was allowed to be um very affectionate with yeah. my mom. So like yeah. I would be laying on her lap, I'd be hugging my mom. Like mom was uh, so dad, cool. dad, yeah. the whole man. I don't even think I hugged my dad. Like, yeah. I, I can't even remember wild, a man. memory of yeah. like 
like that and oh wow no no yeah yeah that yeah that's when you think about it it's 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 (laughs) crazy it's it's crazy because i i think of like how i'm raising my kids now and like they can hug me anytime. Yeah. They can chill with me. Yeah. Like my me and my son will like play fight. Yeah. My son's twenty one, and we are still like play fighting. We'll, nice. The other day we were sitting down watching like Teen Wolf movie together, like yeah. just vibing. Yeah. We have those moments, and then like I've I don't think I've ever had those moments with my dad. Yeah. Well, not not that I can re- not that I can recall. Yeah. Yeah. I just no no yeah. <laughs> no no. Yeah, no. It's different, right? Like, yeah. That dynamic. Between you and your dad, and then you and your son, and you're like, man, like I wish I had this one out, like with my dad. Yeah, you know? definitely. Because then maybe the relationship would have been different. Yeah. But yeah, it's I, maybe I think it's their generation too, like the affection it was is different. Yeah, yeah. You know? That that's a possibility. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. It's 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 just so weird, and maybe because they were, Im- your parents are immigrants. Yeah. Yeah, mine's were too. So I guess maybe because they were immigrants in a new country. Yeah. Maybe the culture back home was different. I think so too. I, think I don't it know. Does, it does have to. It, you know, you're, you're probably right because like when I would go to like my friend's house who were like Caucasian, their dynamics was totally different. I'd be in awe. Like they were able to have conversations with each other. Yeah. They were able to hug each other and show affection. It, even as simple as like saying I love you to each other. Like that, we never did that in our household. Wow. You know, like it was never like, oh, I'm proud of you or or not even a good night, you know, or not even a, I love you. Like we never said those things. Wow. You know, wow. For, like to each other growing up. Well, in, in my household, you had to say good night. Yeah. If you didn't say good night, you weren't going to sleep. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dope rule, Yeah. Man. No, no, no. Yeah. You weren't. No, no, no. Like you had to say, there's certain customs that you have to. Yeah. You have to like abide by like yeah. you wake up, you say good morning. Yeah. You're going to sleep. You say good night. Yeah, if yeah. you don't, it's like a sign of disrespect. Yeah. And I don't even think it's like, I don't even think it was a thing of showing love. I think it was just, if you don't do this, you're disrespecting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just, it was just a custom. Yeah. Right. But to hit like definitely, you know, different, different, um, different ethnic group, different races, different places yeah. have uh, different cultures yeah right? they show they show it's weird they show affection weird like yeah our like in the filipino culture like culture like the older style it's their affection was like you know putting food on the table and cooking make sure you're fed that's affection yeah as opposed to physical aff- affection or verbal affection like that's how they show like oh we love you because you know you're, you have a roof over your head yeah clothes on your back food on the table that's our love to you yeah you know as opposed to like for us, we're like, that's not really love. I mean, that's like what a parent should do anyway. That, that's, you know, that's mandatory that's, things. That's bare, minimum, <laughs> yeah, right? bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, as simple as like, I remember the first time my mom said, yeah, yeah, I'm proud of you. You know, like that was like in high school. And wow. I'm like, wow. Like I was I'm like almost 18. Now you say wow. that. You know? Wow. Wow. Um, but now she says like, we're more like, obviously, as you get older, the relationship gets better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like growing up like preteen and teens, like, it was rough to navigate with like my parents because it's like they were so they tried to be so strict yeah you know and then it got better over time but you know like a couple falling outs but over time like it got better relationship got better all right so if you had to give advice to fathers what would your advice be Ooh, what would my advice be learn learn to be patient with uh you know Learn patience overall, because then it'll, it'll teach you to be patient with your child and also be patient with, like, your partner. Um, I find that's the biggest key. Well, that was the biggest key for me was the patience. Yeah. So if you can learn patience, and the rest will follow, man, because, you know, like, you, whatever parenting style you want to do, that, that patience will, will go hand in hand with your parenting style. See, I'm I'm glad I'm getting like a consensus. Everybody's saying patience is like the biggest thing to have. It is because us us dads we don't have it. It's the moms <laughs> that that have it. Like it's embedded and it's ingrained in it's them. It's so true. But for us fathers, like we don't we don't have a pa- we didn't grow up with patience. You know, I yeah. don't know if maybe it's just how we're hardwired. Like that patience. There's I've seen some patient guys. Yeah. But like 
across a board, like it's probably a small percentage right. of us guys that are, are patient. But yeah, man, like I had to learn a lot of patience, you know. I, I, I learned a lot of patience having kids and um, my kids definitely changed me like drastically. Like when I was younger, I used to fight all the time. Yeah. I, I had no hesitation fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, li- I there's a couple one of my boys and he's been my boy from I think since I was in grade eight or yeah. nine eight I would say he's my boy to this day because he was about to get jumped and I stepped in like right. I had no cares in the world I stepped in and, and, and we were fighting whoever yeah right um but when I had my when I had my kids it like totally changed my whole makeup like so I, I didn't want to fight anybody yeah <laughs> like I didn't want to fight anybody um I I was more aware of my surroundings, aware of situations. Uh, and I, I don't think I had patience right away, but it developed really quickly, mm. right? Where it's like this child can't communicate. So, you know, I kind of have to be patient with them yeah. or like, you know, my wife, she's having issues or whatever. Yeah. I kind of have to be patient with that. Yeah. And I, I think it just, it, it developed. I, I, again, I didn't have it right away. Yeah. Like, like she did. She had bare patience. bare patience. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. This yeah, is ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't have that patience, yeah. but it developed. Um, it developed really quickly, and it, it was it's it's one of the strongest tools that I have today. Nice. Yeah. Right. Where it's yeah. it's. I understand you're trying to get to a point. Yeah. I may already be at that point. I'm gonna wait for you. Yeah. And I'm gonna allow you to. Get to the point however you can. Yeah. And I'll, I'll help you. I'll give you, like, yeah. you know, little guides and stuff. But yeah. I understand that you're on your own journey to this point, And it'll look different than mine. Yeah. So definitely patience is is, is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I, I agree with you to that point where, like, it changed you having your kid. Like, I, I think, like, once you have your kid and you really care, it's like, you know you have a responsibility to that human being and yeah. to yourself to not do bad things or to do yeah. better right to, yeah. to be better because you want to see your kid grow up you want it to be better for your kid yeah so you're not trying to be the same or be worse right so you it, it does change you in, in that way it 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 holds you accountable yeah accountability yeah. yeah right because like you said you want to see your child develop and grow you're accountable to this person they're depending on you mm-hmm. to feed them to be there for them yeah. so you're gonna do everything you can in your power to to be there for that child yeah so yeah definitely accountability and i i, I learned that really really young yeah because <laughs> i had my first child at 19 yeah so i learned that really really young yeah i as soon as i had my child I was like all right you know fun's over I, got, I gotta go work i gotta go do what i gotta do yeah. to provide so turned you into a man real quick eh? real quick <laughs> it man's you and i like what you said if you care yeah because you cannot care and stay there's, the same. There's some deadbeat dads that don't care, right? They so, don't even yeah. blink. <laughs> That's why I, I had to say, like, if you care, you're gonna you're gonna be there for your child, and you're also gonna be a better person. Because if you're a better person, then that helps out your child. Because you being a better person is helping that child be grow. You know, yeah. like grow as a as a better human being. Because if you don't grow yourself, like then like those kind of like habits will kind of get instilled or you'll just be a bad influence to your child. Right. But if you're growing, your child's going to be like, oh, like my dad's like the best person in the world. Like as simple as like my son, like a couple weeks ago, he's like, oh, you know what I like about you? I was like, what's that? He goes, oh, you're like you're so generous. But at this end, he goes, you also like, you also teach me how to work hard. Oh, that's dope. I was like, dope. oh, that's wild. That's that's, that's, that's dope. Yeah. Cause I, I, every time, like whenever he's doing something, I never let him quit. I said, just keep trying, keep trying. You'll get it. Yeah. You know, as simple as like last summer, like he couldn't get a crossover. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, he's practiced for a couple of weeks and then he got it and he did good at like the camp or whatever. And he goes, yeah, you know, like, thanks to you. Like, you know, I, he didn't let me quit. Like nice. I kept like going at it and you got better. I'm like, anything you do, like, I know it's tough at first, but you just keep doing it and you'll get past it and you'll get better. Right. Yeah. Oh, he's going to love you for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That type of mentality when he gets older, it's going to be yeah. such an asset. Yeah. Yeah. Because kids, really- you know, like, you know, kids, like, it's so easy for them to try and quit, right? But as long as you encourage them not to quit and just keep working at it, and they'll see, like, 
the effort that they put in, they'll see the rewards, right? So yeah, no, he's he's gonna that that mindset moving forward in life is gonna help him yeah. across the board, like in yeah. anything he wants to do. Yeah. So that's that's super dope. And he, the fact that he's he's seven and he can he can verbalize that. Yeah, right. I was that's, like, that's wild. Wild man. So, Yo, yeah, that's that and that shows like a level of emotional intelligence yeah. on his part yeah. that that he can say, listen, I know the lesson was hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know it's already benefited me. Yeah. That's crazy. At wow, seven. Right? And it's like, yo, you know what hard work like that's like the fact that you know like hard work pays off, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't even think about that stuff when I was your age, you know what I mean? Bro, I bro, these kids make us look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these kids make us look like I don't know, like <laughs> uh, they're so advanced, man. Yeah. It's so crazy. So it is. Well, the technology, right? Like since they were born, they had iPads or whatever. Yeah. You know, like I see a kid sometimes like at the mall or whatever, and they're like not even barely even two and they're navigating through the like iPad. Yeah. Oh my god, it's wild. How do you how do you manage um your child and, and all the stuff that's on social media? Like with like the toxic masculinity, like LGBTQ, like all these different um spaces of information. How do you how do you like manage that and keep your child a child? Uh well thankfully he's not on social media yet. Okay. Um, you know, he's more in that video game stage. Uh, but he does like he, he loves playing Roblox. Like these kids. Oh love yeah, yeah, Roblox. Roblox you know? Yeah. So and then they're on the group chat. So like the the group chat while they play Roblox. Uh but they're not they're at that age where like I guess school's like slowly teaching them that stuff, but yeah. you know, yeah, I'm not at that. I'm not at that phase yet where they're curious or you know need that talk about, you know, LGBTQ or just kind of like stuff that's going on in the world. Yeah, um, you know, but we do once in a while, like if stuff's happening around the world, we do just kind of mention it, and if okay. he has questions, we just kind of try to explain it to our best of our abilities, but. Uh, you know, because kids will like either find that information through school or yeah, through yeah. wherever, right? Um, sometimes it's like he'll talk about stuff from school, and I'm like, "Where'd you hear that?" He goes, "Oh, it's like we heard, heard about it at school," and then we'll try to explain it. But you know, like you can't you can't police like what they're privy to or yeah, what, you know what's being said or to them or whatever. But all you could do is just explain and you know just tell them like, "Oh, like that's misinformation" or. You know, that's that's opinion and things like that. So I guess we just have to teach them, like, how to know what's right or maybe, like, get facts, you know, yeah. get the right facts. Like, don't assume, like, you know, uh, some information. And I told him, like, you know, stuff you see on the Internet is not all real, you know. That's true. Like, sometimes you get excited about, like, some random stuff, like <laughs> Roblox or some YouTube you saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, that's all not real, you know, like. Like I tell them, like anything you see or read on the internet is not all true. Sometimes, um, you know, just treat it with a grain of salt, just like the stuff you see in the movies. Like it's acting, right? Yeah. So that's how okay. we can do. Dope, dope, yeah. dope, dope. Well, I appreciate you coming yeah, on. Man, thanks for having me on, bro. No, appreciate thank you it. for coming and sharing your journey. Um, definitely uh, loved your insight, and thanks. and definitely you're, you're doing a good job because the fact that your kid is already emotionally intelligent enough to like tell that, yeah. that's yo you're yeah, doing. It you guys shocked are, me, man. Yeah, I told my wife that is like wow. I was like, oh. You and your wife are doing an amazing job, and I see I see him on your social media. Yeah. He's such a dope kid, yeah. man. Like, he's so yeah, cool. He's funny, man. He's he's wild. He's goofy. Like I don't know. A lot of people, like a lot of my relatives, are like, oh, he's like a carbon copy of you, and I'm like. Did I really used to be like that? There's no way I used to be like that, cause he's he's wild, man. Yeah. But they say yeah, they're like yo, his personality, the way he look, he looks like you, it's carbon copy. Like if you say so, man. Like, man, that's good. That's yeah. good. All my kids are like me. Yeah. They're a bunch of jerks. <laughs> jerks, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my kids are dope though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're hilarious. No, they are jerks though, but they're funny. Yeah. Yeah, they're funny. So. <laughs> no, I appreciate what you're doing, man. Like, uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be on this episode. No, I'm looking forward to see all the dads come on as guests. Thanks, man. Hopefully, you get some celebrity dads on here. Let's let's see what happens, That's man. You it, know, man. Drake. You know, anytime. That's it. <laughs>
Fred, Freddy, some, somebody. For everybody, you know? man. I listen. I want. I really just want to to showcase like fathers. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think the media um, showcases fathers enough. Yeah. Moms yeah. get all the praise. Moms get all the love, and and it's deserving. Like they deserve it. They do a lot. Yeah. Right, uh, but like you said, fathers play their part too, and yeah, and not all of us are deadbeat, absent dads. Sure. You know, there's yeah. a lot of present dads that are doing yeah. amazing things, but it's never highlighted. Yeah, so I just wanted to like, you know, showcase some fathers, and that's it. You no, know, if it blows up, it blows up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I just want to create a space where dads can come, and, you yeah. know, tell their story and and tell their truth, and yeah. and just just know that you know you're appreciated for what you're doing. If you never hear it any from anybody else, you're gonna hear it from me. Like you know, I appreciate right. what you're doing. The 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 future generations is gonna benefit from you yeah. know you being in your in your kid's life. Yeah, no, and there's a lot of dope fathers out there. You know, yeah. it's just like about highlighting and, and showcasing and just having a conversation about what what we go through. Yeah, how we feel, how we grew up, how it affects raising our children. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, you know, just even like it doesn't have to be for the dads. Like the moms can watch this and be like. Oh, like I didn't know you guys felt like that. I didn't know you guys go through that yeah, stuff. Facts. Right. So yeah, appreciate that. Uh, you know, having us on here, man. Yeah. And and again, it's just you know all the other dads know that you know you're not alone. There's yeah. there's dads yeah. in the same situation. Yeah. A lot of us are going through the same struggles, the same, uh, you know, learning curves and everything. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 a network network of support out yeah. here. You know, so that's, you know what's good too. Like I like that we have similarities and also certain things we we experience like in different ways like yeah. opposite ways right so like it's just good to see uh, to show that to the world that it's like you know we can relate to each other in some things and some things like we experience it different yeah you know so thanks man appreciate, appreciate you man you, bro. appreciate y'all for um you know watching uh if you haven't followed follow the instagram page uh, dad talk uh, dad talks with jay blues uh, and like, subscribe, click the notify bell so you know you know when I'm gonna drop another episode. And until next time, peace. Sick. Thank you.